What is going on guys? My name is Bucky Roberts and welcome to your very first tutorial in MongoDB. Now I'm sure a lot of you watching this video already know exactly what MongoDB is and what it's used for, but for those of you who may have just heard the name before and aren't really sure exactly what it is, I'll give you guys like the quick one minute introduction. So MongoDB is the most popular NoSQL database. So why would we actually need this? Well, say that you're making a website and, I don't know, let's say it was a social network and you wanted to store a bunch of user information. Well, you could use MongoDB for that. Say that you're making some mobile app and, I don't know, like it was a game and you wanted to save a bunch of scores from all the users. Well, you can use MongoDB for that. Anytime you want to save information on a server, you can use MongoDB. So that's what a database is but what is the no SQL part well traditionally before the big no SQL movement whenever you wanted to save information in the database you did so in kind of a tabular format so think of a spreadsheet where you have a bunch of rows and columns this is pretty much how you save data before but what this no SQL thing is all about is pretty much a movement where you can now save data to a database without using tables. So if you guys are like, all right, that sounds a lot more confusing. Well, it is at first if you're used to, let's say MySQL or something, but it actually gives you a lot of benefits, not only performance and speed, but also a lot more flexibility with your programs as well. So it's pretty awesome and we'll actually see a lot of benefits later on. But for now, of course, the first thing we need to do is actually, um, you know, download and install it. So if you go to the website mongodb.org, you're going to see a big green download button. Maybe somewhere else. They probably changed the website, you know, depending on when you're watching this. But find the download section and click it. And this is going to give you a couple options if you scroll down. Now, of course, the first thing we have to decide is what operating system are we trying to install this on. That shouldn't be that hard. I'm running Windows in this tutorial. The next option is what version do you want? So you're going to see a couple choices. Whenever you have Windows 7 or newer, for example, I'm running uh, Windows 7 in this video, you're going to want to choose the default one. Legacy means Vista or older. So any Windows 7 or newer, 7, 8, what's the next one, 10, since they skipped 9, you're going to want to choose this one anything older that's what the legacy is so I'm gonna go ahead and download this MSI and this is pretty much just an installer so whenever it downloads you double click it and it's a wizard that you click next a bunch of times and then you're gonna have MongoDB on your computer alright so it finished installing let's go ahead and double click this opens it up yes I wanna run it let me minimize my window right there alright so we're pretty much gonna stick with all the defaults so just go ahead and click next let me read through this do, 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 do. I read it I read it trust me guys alright next now here what we want to do is we want to install the complete and this is pretty much like it says gonna give you all the features no need to customize this right now this is the first tutorial so complete and install so it's gonna do its thing and Windows is probably gonna ask me for permission so yep there you go yes I'll allow it I trust it and it's actually a real quick installation alright so apparently we now have MongoDB on our machine so now what we can do is we can go to our start menu computer and double click on our hard drive now in our program files we're gonna see that we now have a directory called MongoDB so double click that and go into your server 3.0 and look for a directory called bin and by the way the path of bin may change depending on if they decide to you know update the location in future um, versions of Mongo but essentially look for the directory called bin double click it and inside here you're gonna see a bunch of Mongo executables so these are a bunch of different tools that you can use with Mongo the only two that we're gonna be worried about in the first couple of tutorials are this one MongoD and this one Mongo so MongoD this is the actual Mongo database so eventually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be running this program right here and it's pretty much just going to run in the background but once you run it 
you can start using your computer as a Mongo database. So if you guys are like, all right, well, where do I actually do the typing, writing all my commands and stuff? For that, you use Mongo, the regular Mongo application. So Mongo is a command line interface where you can type all your database commands, um, you know, add data, remove data, all that good stuff. So again, MongoD is going to run in the background and we're going to be doing all of our typing inside this Mongo command line application. So let's go ahead and figure out how to set everything up. What we need to do is we actually need to open up in the start menu again, type CMD and open up the command line. I actually have it pinned to my taskbar. I recommend you do that. But if you don't want to, then just type CMD and click this and it opens up your Windows command line. So what we need to do from here is we actually need to navigate to this directory and we need to start MongoD. And by the way, anytime you want to run an executable through your command line, all you do is you navigate to the location and type the name without the .exe extension. So just MongoD. So if you never use a command line before, it's actually really easy. I'll show you guys the really simple commands that you need for this tutorial. So obviously, the location of this is in C program files, MongoDB server, whatever, whatever. So right now we're in C users Bucky. We need to get back to C, our main hard drive. So if you type CD, this means change directory, and you can type dot dot, and that'll move you up one directory. So now we're in users, let's do that again. And now we are in C. Now anytime you want to move into a folder, for example, if you want to go back into users, you type CD users and hit enter. But what we want to do is we actually want to go to this location right here, program files, MongoDB server 3.0 bin. So we can actually type that all in one long path and hopefully I won't mess anything up. So program files, what was it? MongoDB server 3.0 bin. All right, now hit enter and there you go. So now we are in this directory pretty much. So, and actually if you want to verify that, then you can type dir and it's going to list all of the contents or all of the files in that directory. So as you can see, we now have a bunch of different executables, mongo, mongod.exe. So remember I told you, anytime you want to run an executable, just type the name mongod, simple as that. So whenever we try to run it right off the bat, as you can see, things aren't going smoothly. We have one little issue that we need to take care of first, and that's this. It, this uh, you know, little message is kind of hard to sift through, but this is essentially saying you need a data directory, and that's what the C data DB not found terminating means. It's pretty much yelling at you because it's saying, all right, you're trying to set up a database to store a bunch of information. You need to give me a directory or a location to store all that info. What am I supposed to do? Just pick some random place on your desktop? No. Where am I supposed to store this info? And the standard location to store it is on your hard drive. Make a directory called data and then in there make a directory called DB. So what we can actually do is just go to your computer in your hard drive, right click here, make a folder called data DB or a really simple way is through our command line. If we just type the command mkdir and actually let me show you guys. All right, so right now, as you can see, we have no directory called data or DB at all. So I'm gonna type mkdir, which means make a directory and then type data DB and hit enter and check it out. So now if we go back into our hard drive, we now have a directory called data DB. So any information that we store using Mongo DB is going to go right in here. Pretty awesome. So what we do from here is just run the Mongo D command again and check it out. Now, since we have that directory, gave it a place to store the information, the database is running correctly and it says waiting for connections on port 27017. 
So everything is going awesome, nice and smooth. We can start typing commands, working with MongoDB. However, I'm going to show you guys one little shortcut. And by the way, if you want to stop watching the video right now and just, um, you know, whenever you want to run the server, navigate to this long string right here, you can do that, move on to the next video. But if you want to, uh, you know, pretty much save yourself of having to type all this, I'll show you guys a cool little shortcut. So back in your Windows Explorer, navigate back to Program Files, MongoDB, Server, 3.0, Bin. Now, inside here, right-click any of these files and choose Properties. So we want to copy this location right here because we're going to be setting up a shortcut where we're pretty much going to say, whenever we type MongoD, look in this location. So that way we don't have to type it out every single time in the command line because that was kind of a pain in the butt. So once you have this copied, you can actually close out of here. And actually, let me close out of my entire database right now. So if you go to your Start menu, right-click Computer, and hit Properties, what you can do from here is go to Advanced System Settings. And this gives you an option of Environment Variables. So click this button and what you want to do is you want to create a new variable and name it P-A-T-H all in capital letters and paste in that location. So now in our command line whenever we type Mongo it's going to look in this location for default so we don't have to navigate to it. And by the way I already have my path set up because I actually had Mongo installed on my computer. I just uninstalled it for this tutorial. But anyways, once you have it, click OK. And make sure you click OK right there. And check this out. You can now, from your command line, type MongoD. And it starts up without having to navigate to that weird location. So definitely a lot more handy. And now, as you can see, our Mongo database is now sitting waiting for connections. Now obviously if you try to type in here you can't because I said this is just the database. It's just a program that runs in the background while you're listening for connections from like users to your website or whatever. If you ever want to start using these commands and testing everything out go to your command line again and since I have it open already I need to open another one and remember the program to type all of our commands is Mongo. So just hit enter. So as you can see, it gives you a little cursor. This is actually where you type commands. I'm going to be teaching you guys about all the commands in the future tutorials. For now, just to ensure that everything is working, type DB and hit enter. And that just prints out the name of a default database that it gave you. But now we know it's working. And actually, as you can see, it says one connection now open, which pretty much simulates that we're a user writing some requests or commands right here and we are now successfully connected to our database so pretty simple there you go now that we got all the hard stuff out of the way in the next couple tutorials we get into the really fun stuff so I'll see you then